was quite difficult because it hadn't been done before. We had the ingredients of sun, wind, water taking in consideration. Sustainability was the first thing to go by and afterwards architecture. But of course that brings up also discussions about what should a building be. It had to have good daylight conditions, good energy performance. We wanted to make an energy neutral building, boost the biodiversity of the site itself. We wanted to optimize the wind conditions. We wanted to prevent shadowing of the neighbors and we wanted to have a good materialization. This is how Elements was born, but also how uh, we tried to load it. And then uh, the decision was being made to use parametric tools to define actually the process or the project. The biggest challenge we faced was to come up with an integrated design that provided a solution to all the sustainability requirements we set ourselves provided this aesthetically and pleasing building that was also functional and had a close business case. What we did in the first phase, more of a classical uh, approach uh, into urbanism, looking at the context, shaping the volume within the building envelope. And we had a, a stepping building that made the connection to the surroundings on one hand and then really established kind of a relationship with the tower to the surroundings. And the first results of um, kind of the parametric approach to me, they were pretty amazing um, because it was the opposite than I expected. The power of parametric design is that it involves all elements and maximize the experience people have in their own home. And that uh, contributes to more healthy living environments for people. In a traditional process, the architect takes the lead in coordination and uh, comes up with a shape, uh, sustainability requirements are becoming much more important. So uh, with the paradigm our form follows sustainability, uh, also the design process itself changes, where everybody is much more integ integrated, involved with the overall shaping of the building. You really have to uh, look at it with an open mind and to see like what is the benefits of the solution being offered. And uh, there was a lot of good we saw in it. Uh, but it's also like humans against machine in a way. Something we learned from this unique process is that the role of the architect changes, but he's still very important for the process. I think uh, um, at the end of the day, it's a merging of, of both of it. It's not the machine taking the control huh, and like computer that is fed by parameters, but it's really kind of the interaction of uh, urbanism uh, typology um, and uh, kind of learning from machines as well. You have to take a holistic approach to take a balanced view on what is the best overall solution for the building and exactly that is what we did on Elements. It asked a lot from all parties involved, Arab and Koshug and also us, because we had to make instead of one sketch design we had to make like thousands. I'm actually thankful for two things. First thing is the open-mindedness of both the client and the architect in looking for a new way of exploring the best possible solution for this fantastic project. The other thing is the perseverance. It wasn't easy and we clashed, but particularly the client held on on the perceived quality that the building had to have and pushed us as far as we could go. It was a small team, but I think uh, we came to know each other quite well. Uh, we made a lot of hours uh, before coming to the final design. It became uh, a friendship, actually. It was a uh, yeah, mind-blowing experience. Here, because there was a, obviously a big uh, role of Arab in the process, uh, I really embraced it, joining them as a team, trying to make each other better and uh, uh, exploiting new ways. So I'm, uh, I'm super proud of obviously what we're going to achieve and what we're going to make. Uh, energy uh, neutral uh, high-rise in Amsterdam, which is unique. <laughs>